Welcome to this presentation on Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. This is one of the early motivational theories. Although models of the theory are usually shown as a pyramid, Maslow never represented his theory this way. There are five levels to the pyramid. The lowest levels are made up of the most basic needs, whereas, the complex needs are at the top. The crux of the theory is that a person needs to satisfy their basic order needs before they can successfully fulfill higher order needs. This is called fulfillment progression. The first two levels of physiological needs and safety needs are the basic order needs. The top three levels of social needs, esteem needs and self-actualization, are higher order needs. The first level of the pyramid is physiological needs which are the most basic needs. They include, uh, water and food, even clothing and shelter. The second level is safety needs. These include, steady employment, health insurance, living in a safe neighborhood. It is about personal security, financial security and security against accidents and illnesses. Love and belonging, also called social needs, is the third level. This is friendship, intimacy, having a family and friends. It includes acceptance and companionship. Esteem is the fourth level. It refers to how you feel about yourself, your personal wealth, how you are recognized socially, your accomplishments. It is about how you respect yourself and how you respect others. The highest level in Maslow's hierarchy is self-actualization. This is the level where a person attains their full potential, they realize their potential as a person. Those levels are further divided. The first four levels are referred to as D needs or deficiency needs because they arise from deprivation. The top level, self-actualization, is a B need. A B need. It is about growth, growth as a person. How can you tell if a person has reached the level of self-actualization? Good question. There are a few factors to think about. First, acceptance and realism. A self-actualized person has realistic perceptions of themselves, of others and of the world around them. Second, problem centering. Self-actualized people are concerned with solving problems outside of themselves. This might be helping to solve problems with other people or major problems that affect the world. The third factor to consider is spontaneity. Self-actualized people can conform to rules and expectations but they can also be open and unconventional. Autonomy and solitude is a fourth factor. The self-actualized can be private and independent because they need time to enjoy their own company. They need the time alone as much as they need time with other people. The final factor that we will discuss is appreciation. The self-actualized person sees the world with wonder and awe. Can all of a person's needs ever be satisfied? Well, that is quite unlikely. It is quite unlikely that all of a person's needs at a level will ever be fully satisfied. However, when you think about the five levels, a person whose needs are substantially satisfied at a level will no longer be motivated by those needs of that level. You said at the start that Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a motivational theory. How can it be used? In order to motivate a person, say, one of your staff, you need to know which level they are at. Knowing that, you then work to satisfy their needs at the next level above. So, managers who accept Maslow's theory attempt to change their management practices to meet the needs of their employees. In what ways do they do that? I'll give you some examples. It might be the development of a good induction process to make new staff feel part of the group. Or, using social events to develop team spirit. Or, using personal development plans to meet individual needs for personal fulfillment. Is Maslow's theory universally accepted? No, but that is not to say that it is not a useful model for thinking and understanding. This theory originated in the 1930s and so it is quite old. Some of the criticism of the model include. The say search methodology in small sample of participants, there is criticism about Maslow's ranking and further criticism about whether the needs are in a hierarchy, and, there is criticism about whether or not there are differences between different types of societies. Alright, 
that has been a quick overview of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It is not universally accepted but it does provide insights into the motivational needs of people.